What we're going to be looking at here are two temporary tax differences that result in a deferred tax asset and a deferred tax liability. And for example here, we're going to have excess tax depreciation over book depreciation by 60,000 here. Uh, 60 represents in thousands of dollars here, so that's 60,000. And that's going to be for year X1 uh, where we have this excess tax depreciation over book depreciation and it's going to reverse itself over the next three years here at $20,000 per year. And then we're going to have, uh, secondly here, we're going to have rent, $25,000 received in advance here in year X1, but it's going to be year earned here in year X2. So what we have to do here is we're going to be dealing with the deferred tax asset and the deferred tax liability. And to determine, uh, understand what's going on here, we lay, lay these things out in the terms here where you're going to have your financial accounting or your book income here and you're going to have to determine the tax expense here based on your financial accounting or your book accounting here and then also we have to look and compare it to our tax accounting or what I refer to as our tax here and that's going to be where we're going to have to determine our tax payable here so for tax accounting we're dealing with a tax payable and for financial accounting we're dealing with a tax expense and what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be looking at uh, first looking at our depreciation expense here and that is where we're going to have the for the first year here for our tax accounting the entire uh, 60,000 in this depreciation expense is going to be uh, taken here it's going to be reduce our income here by 60,000 here for this first year here but for our financial accounting we're not going to recognize any depreciation in the first year here but we're going to start recognizing it in the second year here it's going to be a reverse itself. The 60000 is going to reverse itself here. So for financial accounting, we're going to deduct 20000 for each of the next three years here. And that's what we call a temporary difference where it's going to be reversing itself. So what we're going to be looking at here for, uh, for this depreciation here of 60000 which it reduces our, for our tax accounting, which is going to reduce our income here by 60000 in the first year here, we're going to refer to that as a deferred tax liability. What it's going to be is, and that's where we calculate the future taxable amount times the future tax rate. So we just take what that uh, that 60000 here, the total amount of depreciation expense in the first year here, times the tax rate. We'll just say it's 40% here, a future tax rate, same as the current tax rate. That's going to give us $24,000. So that's going to be a deferred tax liability. Well, why do we call it a deferred tax liability? So if you come up here and you look at, compare it to this, your financial accounting or your book income here versus your tax, tax income in this second year here, year X2, for book purposes we're going to reduce twenty thousand dollars here per for that income for the year here but for tax accounting we're not going to take any depreciation since all of it was taken in the first year here so when you're looking at it in those times terms here for your depreciation expense for tax accounting uh you read none is being taken out here so your tax accounting here uh you're going to have a tax liability because you're in this case the tax income here is going to be higher than the book income or you can say the book income is lower here because you're deducting 20,000 here for that second year here it's book income's lower than your tax income so therefore you're talking about a deferred tax liability that's by the definition here okay and for a deferred tax liability here that's where any temporary difference that in reversing itself here causes taxable income to be higher than the financial income or the book income here. So we call that a deferred tax liability. So you can see here your tax, your taxing taxable income here is going to be higher. You don't have any depreciation expense in the second year here. So it's going to be higher than your financial or book income here because in the financial or book income, you're taking the 20,000 here. So that's what we talk about in a deferred tax liability in this case here. Now we also have in this problem, a deferred tax asset here, and that's that $25,000 of rent received in advance. For tax accounting, we're going to recognize the whole 25000 in the first year here because let's just say it was a cash receipt here. But for financial accounting, we're going to recognize it when it was earned and we're saying it was earned here in year X2. So let's move down to our tax accounting here. The rent received is going to increase our income for the year here by 25000 And we're going to 
call that a deferred tax asset. That's referred to as a deferred tax asset. That's where we're going to be. It's going to be a future deductible amount times a future tax rate. In this case, we take the total twenty-five thousand here times the future tax rate. I'm just throwing it out to be forty thousand here. That's going to be the future de deferred tax asset of ten thousand dollars. So why do we call it a deferred tax asset here? So if you compare it, go back up to your financial accounting here. In the second year here, we have to recognize that rent received the twenty-five thousand when it was earned. So that's going to increase our income here for the year here. Whereas for our tax accounting, well, we re recognize the total amount here in the first year here zero in the second year here so it is not going to increase our income here for the year here so uh, in this case our book income here is going to be higher than our tax income and that's and be, and by that termination uh, term, uh, uh, by that uh, definition here it's going to be a deferred tax asset that we calculated here and what we mean by a deferred tax asset here is that any temporary difference that in reversing itself causes the taxable income here to be lower than our financial book income. So that's a deferred tax asset here. You can see our tax income here, nothing is added to it for that year here for the rent received, whereas our financial or book income, we had to include the 25,000 here. So our book income here is higher than our tax income. Okay, so that's what we're talking about here when we're uh, determining if we have a deferred tax asset or deferred tax liability here. So you have to look at it and lay it out in these terms here and then you have to compare your financial accounting book income to your tax accounting book income here. And where you had the case here where we had a deferred tax liability here uh, in the when this when this uh, temporary differences was reversing itself here in that second year here our tax accounting here would uh, essentially they call it a future taxable amount here because you don't get the deducted here in your second year here versus your financial or accounting or book income we were able to deduct some here so this is where our book income here is lower than our tax income. And the same with our deferred tax asset here. You have to lay it out in these terms here and look at it as a future deductible amount because you can see here for our tax accounting purposes in this second year here, we didn't include any of that income here. Whereas for our financial accounting, we did include it. So that increased our book income here was higher then our tax income, and that's what we call a deferred tax asset. Okay, so now let's just go down and look at how we'd record this here. So all I'm doing is we're going to have some taxes payable here, some tax expense here, and then we're going to have a deferred tax asset and a deferred tax liability here. So how you you can just take this right off our calculations up here. Now we didn't go through our tax calculations here, and maybe we should here. What uh, looking at our uh, looking at our financial accounting book income here, we had we had for each year here. We're just looking at two years. We had three hundred fifty thousand in the first year, three hundred and twenty-five thousand in the second year here. And for book income here, we didn't have any uh, depreciation or rent received here. So total uh, taxable income here was three hundred and fifty thousand times a forty percent tax rate. I'm just saying it's constant over those two years, one hundred forty thousand. And then for the uh, financial uh, for the second year here. For our book here, we had 325,000, and then we had a reduction here of a, by a, for a depreciation expense, plus we had an increase here due to our rent received here. A total of 330,000 times 40% gives us 132,000. And then same for our tax accounting, you can just go through it here. We had a deduction here for the first year for depreciation, a 60,000, and then we had increase here for the rent received, 25. Total taxable income here, the 315,000 times 40%, 126,000. And then the next year here, we didn't have any depreciation or uh, uh, reduction or rent received here. So taxable income was that 325 times 40%, uh, 130,000. So let's go down and let's just look at how we'd record this. So the, like we went here, we have our tax payable here. That would be on our balance sheet here for tax accounting. And that's comes up for our tax accounting for a tax we call it a tax payable here so for year x1 we had 126,000 creditor in increase our tax payable here and then for year x2 130,000 here creditor increase our tax payable and then the other thing is our tax expense on our income statement and that um, 
we go up here to our where our financial accounting we had a 140,000 for the first year here 132,000 here for the second year so debit or increase our tax expense by those amounts now we have also we record our deferred tax asset here and that is what we calculated up above here the deferred tax asset that was that 25,000 here of rent received in advance times the 40% tax rate so our deferred tax asset debit that here for ten thousand dollars and then also we have the deferred tax liability and that was that ex excess tax depreciation of sixty thousand over the book depreciation of sixty thousand so here you in this case for the li deferred tax liability uh, we would credit that here for twenty four thousand dollars so you can see uh, that was that sixty thousand here times the forty percent tax rate so what you're seeing here we've set up our deferred tax asset and a deferred tax liability and what we could do in a lot of these cases here, you have to understand, you have to know where the deferred tax assets. You've got to know your debit and credit amounts here. Debit here is a plus, credit a minus here, and deferred tax liability. That would be on the balance sheet. Remember, you've got a debit minus here, a credit plus. So we determine what our deferred tax asset and deferred tax liability is. But in knowing any one of these amounts for our debits and credits here we can actually plug and determine what the other amounts are but since we calculated them up above here we can we just put them in here so you understand now what are deferred tax assets and our deferred tax liabilities they reverse themselves here so for looking at our second year here x2 you can see that we have uh, 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 it reversed the deferred tax assets going to credit it out here and we can look at it in terms of our debits and credits here when we come to an end and if for deferred tax liability here it reverses itself out we start out with a credit balance here and it for, we're going to reverse itself out here by eight thousand dollars each year that was the twenty thousand dollars here in a depreciation for the year here times the forty percent tax rate so what we're going to do here, let's just look at our debits and credits. Go through them quickly here so you understand. Say we had a credit here in our tax payable, 126000 Now, we have another credit here for a deferred tax liability of 24000 So what does that add up to? 150000 for our credits. Now, that balances with our tax expense here. Remember, we calculated that to be 140000 debit amount here. And then our for deferred tax asset, we had that debit here of 10,000. So that's 150,000 they balance out. And it'll be the same for year X2 here. We had deferred tax payable here of 30,000. And then we would have um, a deferred tax liability here, debit, or excuse me, credit here for 130,000. And then we would reverse out our deferred tax asset here, credit of uh, 10,000 here. So a total of a 140,000 in our credits, and then our deferred tax expense. We had 132,000 debit here, and then we would also have another uh, 108,000 debit here for 140,000 here. Deferred tax liability had a debit here of 8,000. So you can see what's going on here. If you're, you can just go in and plug these uh, things, uh, these amounts here. So you set up your T accounts here, and you can, uh, you if you don't know what one or if you know. Well, two of the three here, you should be able to determine the other here. But since we went through and we calculated them all here, we we're able to easily plug them in. But just remember, deferred tax asset, that would be on the asset side of the balance sheet here. Deferred tax liability would be on the liability side of the balance sheet here. And our taxes payable, that's also uh, on our liability side of the balance sheet here. And our tax expense, that would go to our income statement here. Okay, so that will take care of our discussion here looking on... Um, a basic example here where we had two temporary differences that resulted in a deferred tax asset and a deferred tax liability.